Right, so next we're going to turn our attention to the rear bearings and um, I've already fitted a new pair of rear bearings into this headstock and um, we're just going to have a look now to see where we are. Now I know the situation as it stands. Now the rear bearings are a pair of angular contact bearings, here's the old ones here and um, they are held together they are effectively so that the um, the thrust faces of the outers are oriented so that um, so you've got one on the outside of the spindle and one on the inside of the spindle these are the thrust faces and obviously the thrust faces of the of the uh, uh, of the inners are then opposed to each other on the spindle in the opposite direction, and um, in the case of Schoblin, they didn't use face match bearings where they put the bearings together as a, a face match pair, which automatically sets the, uh, the the clearance on the bearing. What they did is they put a spacer in between uh, the two inners and then the two outers are pushed together against that spacer. Let's try and imagine that a bit better by putting a spacer in between the two. So there we are, we've got a spacer in between the, in between the two and the two outers are pushed together and the tighter they're pushed together the more, uh, the, 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 the less the clearance is between the two. And that's achieved there's a nut that goes on the, on the back and holds the spindle um, into the bearings, it's, uh, into the, the pair of bearings it's themselves. But the, uh, the outers, the clearance on the outers is set by this cover. In fact, I think it's probably a good idea just to disassemble that and just have a look at that cover. So removing the cover, you see the outers of the bearings are here and there's the nut that holds the inners together onto the spindle. And then this cover has got a raised portion here which is pushing against the outers of the bearings. So if we have a look at a bearing here, that's pushing against the outer of the bearing. And it's that that sets the clearance. And if you look in the manual, it will tell you how to adjust the clearance is you have to machine this outer to set the clearance. Now in the case of these new bearings I fitted here, um, they're obviously a very slightly different dimension to the, um, to the original bearings that were fitted to this machine. Um, so when we um, certainly when we when we uh, put the cover back on and do it up, it's not going all the way home. The bearings are pressed all the way home into the into the casing. But if I was to try and do these up any tighter, then the spindle would become so stiff that I wouldn't be able to move it. Um, if I just tighten them up, I can feel the spindle getting stiffer. Now, not, I don't want to put, put um, excess pressure on the bearings. Now, this is what sets the end float. Now, in this case, I've got a gap between the headstock casting and the outside of, the, of this uh, outer cover. And if I measure that with a feeler gauge, I think it's something in the region of I think it's about 0.2 of a millimetre, something like that, I'm guessing. Yeah. Not a bad guesstimate at all. There's about 0.2 of a millimetre gap gap there. So it means that I've got to to remove at least 0.2 of a millimetre 
from that face in order to get this set up so that the end clearance, the uh, the end float on the uh, the axial um, the axial play on the bearings is about the specification that Schoblin set it out, which is about uh, two to three two to three microns. So it's fairly fairly small clearance, and of course you can measure that by putting a clock onto the end of the spindle. So let's just bring the camera around, come out, so we can see what we're up to. So if I put a clock onto the end of the spindle here, I've got it assembled up with my test bar, make it nice and convenient for me, and I can now test the end float. Millimeters, let's just see that right. Yeah. I can test the end float pulling back and forth on the spindle to get the end float right. But I know very well that I've got to machine that off. Now, if you don't feel confident about machining this 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 uh, this this cover, I don't see why there's any reason why you shouldn't interpose a gasket or a shim into that gap to shim back or forth in either in either respect really. So if you were to assemble this up and to find that in fact the you had excessive end float. I have obviously haven't got enough end float in, in this case, but if you had excessive end float where the inner part of the of the cover was not pressing on the outer of the bearing sufficiently and there was a gap there and it was moving back and forwards, I see no reason why you shouldn't um, make up a shim or make up a um, uh, some kind of of, uh, of, of of spacer to go in there. There's also no reason why you shouldn't adjust the thickness of the spacer between the two between the two bearings on the spindle. It would have exactly the same effect. You're simply moving the bearings one way or another inside that housing. That's entirely up to to you how you go about about doing that. Um, I just do it in in the uh, in the in the traditional method that Schoblin set out, and I machine this cover. I've got a you know a couple of very good machines, lathes with with good chucks on them. I've also got a surface grinder if I wanted to tackle it that way, which I could. Um, uh, it, 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 that that is if the uh, um, yeah, it, it, in this case where I need to remove material from that inner portion, I could put it on a surface grinder and grind it off. So if you're going to do this by Schoblin's preferred method of, of machining this this face or, or this face, either one of those two faces, depending on which way your clearance is going, in my case I need to have machined this, this face here. What's obviously important is that, that however you hold this, you have to make sure that firstly you want a degree of concent concentricity. Um, so uh, you don't want the thing wobbling around all over the place because you're going to machine this off center which you know wouldn't be the end of the world but it was it but it's not something you want to do you want to make sure that this surface here is in the same plane as this surface surface here so it's important that when you when you when you put this up in your in your in your lathe if you're going to hold it in your lathe in a in a chuck in the in in in, in the on the center portion here and then machine this out these outer surfaces it's important that you just run a clock around the outside just to make sure that is nice and flat that it's sitting nice and flat against the the the, the back of the uh of the machine spindle if you have to um, there's no reason why you shouldn't machine both both um, it at the same time. But if you're going to take this off and then put it onto the onto the headstock again, check your play and then machine a bit more off. You want to make sure that it's re your chuck is repeatable and that every time you put it back on there, it's going to come back in the same place every time. So um, it's not a job, you know, just like replacing any of these bearings on these machines. It's not a job for the faint-hearted. But it is, a, it, but there's there's nothing about this job which is which is is particularly difficult for anybody who's who's a competent machinist and uh, and has got some decent equipment. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to machine machine this off, and um, 
and and then we 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 set it up and uh, we check the end float and uh, and hopefully get somewhere where we where we're going. First of all, I'm going to put this into the into the uh, back onto the um, onto the headstock here. I'm going to check the clearance with a with a feeler gauge to work out roughly how much I've got to take off the of this surface here to to head towards my um, my desired um, end float, and and then I'm going to machine this surface back until I. Uh, until I achieve the, uh, the the figure that I want. Okay, so we've machined the, the surface, and I've just taken off uh, 0.23 uh, of a millimetre. Assemble that back onto the onto the machine again, onto the headstock, and tighten it up. Now I think that I can see even before I've put the screws in, but actually we're going to need to take off some more, just not quite there yet, which is expected, as I said, approach this slowly, don't machine off too much, keep checking and measuring. You can take off more, but you can't put it back on. Well, not very easily anyway. So I'm going to put all three, four screws back in. I'm just tightening them down finger tight, as you can see. Not going mad. There we are. So that's now back in. Let's check the. Should be zero in float because we still need to machine more off, so we haven't got enough axial play yet. We definitely need to remove a tiny bit more from that back plate. So, let's all this up. Taken off. Uh, Point one, point oh one of a millimetre. We'll see where we are. And I think I might resort to the surface grinder after that, just because with the surface grinder I know that I can take off. I can remove tiny amounts, microns at a time, whereas with the lathe it's more difficult to do that, especially on the, on the face of a job. That immediately feels much better. Two to point three of my air float. Now I'm pretty happy with that. That feels feels good. Headstock feels about right. So I've taken a little bit more off the uh, off the, uh, the, the 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 cover here to. Uh, just uh, give it a little bit more clearance on the end float and the end floats now with intolerance I'm, I'm happy with that and the spindle is nice and and free running uh, where it was slightly too too stiff beforehand in my opinion so um, that's the spindle all done now and it's um it, it, it's it's running very quietly on this um, on the setup that we've got here I'll, I'll do a quick um, quick shot of it um, 
uh, of it running. I've actually had it running for a for a few minutes, and uh, the spindle's running very, very nicely indeed. So I think that's uh, that's a, that's a, that's that's a, uh, uh, that's the job done now. Uh, I just need to finish off the headstock by replacing the, uh, the locking pin in here, um, and then it's uh, it's pretty well done. So here's the spindle running. And actually, any noise that you can hear is actually coming from the, uh, the fabricated steel cabinet, the, uh, the drive unit in the bottom. It's just the uh, it's just the noise of the motor. So the spindle is extremely quiet. Um, it's probably the quietest spindle that, um, that I've done, possibly. Um, it's such a long time since I've done one of these now that. Um, that, that perhaps, um, perhaps I've just got used to my own machine, which is which really wants a front bearing replacing, but it's it's well within tolerance. So that my machine is is a little noisier. Um, but I think this is um, yeah, this is this is very very pleasing, very very quiet and um, extremely smooth running. So yeah. Good job, I think. All done.